Today, a full speaker's buying guide for everyone that wants to upgrade, for everyone that wants to buy their first pair of studio speakers. We'll talk about the very small ones, the really big ones, the very inexpensive ones, the very expensive ones, and I'll tell you everything honestly you need to know, and I'll also tell you about all of the bullshit that is happening on the market so you don't get fooled and spend your money on something that just hinders you from actually making good music. So first up, we have like three tiers of speakers. The entry-level ones, then the medium project studio, like dedicated home studios, professional studios, and then we have like the, the big super speakers <laughs> and there's of course a budget you have to keep in mind most people starting out producing music have a very very small budget and there is a mistake in there already if your budget is 200 euros i personally would 100 percent always recommend you to increase that budget to at least four to five hundred because that's the range where you get something that will last you at least five to ten years like these speakers are the Yamaha HS 80M the old version they're at least 15 16 years old and they still they still work and they still produce a really good sound and always think about if you stop making music you can still sell them and and you don't lose that mu much money so try to increase your budget to four or five hundred ish because then you actually get speakers that have an eight inch woofer these right here have an eight inch woofer and it's just physics. The bigger usually the woofer, the more bass they can output. Seven inch woofer is also fine, but please don't get something small for two, three hundred euros that has like a four, five, six inch woofer. There is no way you'll make any kind of music with it where you can hear the bass. Like for example, these they go down, I think according to the manual, to like 30 hertz, but that's complete bullshit. At 50 hertz, they already start cutting off. And 50 hertz is where most of the kicks, at least in electronic dance music, pop music, urban music, where the kick frequency is at. So you can't actually really hear it 100% if you go with a smaller speaker and woofer size. If you only mix vocals and only mid heavy kind of sounds, or it's your second pair of speakers, then yes, go for one of those small ones. But most companies advertise them as being like, the non plus ultra super speaker that covers everything for a lower budget. Honestly, they make these small speakers just for beginners that don't know any better and then just buy according to their budget what they can. So please get like at least six, seven, I would recommend eight inch woofers so you can hear all of the frequencies, especially the low end and bass. Another big misconception is the frequency response. Most of these companies print like a chart on their speaker or put it in the manual or on the advertising website and stuff like that. And it always looks super flat. But if you look closely at the X and Y, you can see that it's usually like zoomed out by a lot and they smooth it. Like they smooth it by a third octave or, or even less to make it look flat ignore these kind of charts like it doesn't mean anything also ignore like the the cutoff frequency in the low end again they're all like it's it's not accurate by the speakers and test them in your studio because the studio environment will definitely change the sound by a lot like right here it's all treated there is no reverb if i go somewhere else you'll hear later in the video there's tons of reverb it changes the sound of the speaker more than the speaker itself so to all beginners, put them on stands, put some rubber underneath so the table doesn't start resonating. And before you upgrade to the middle tier section of speakers, spend at least twice as much money or three times as much money on room acoustic treatment before you upgrade to the next level of speakers because you won't be able to hear it. There is no way. The room alters the sound so much that a speaker that is more expensive just doesn't make any sense. Then we got the middle tier section of speakers. A thousand to thousand five hundred kind of range. Maybe eight hundred to thousand five hundred. Hi. Okay, we, <laughs> we actually have a customer that rents out the B-Studio. So I can't show you the, the B-Studio speakers, but 
I definitely um, got a picture of the B Studio. So these are the Eves, I think SC407, three-way speakers, um, double the bass, top and bottom. And there, there is a significant difference to like the entry-level speakers. They sound more precise, they go louder, they go lower. The, the transients, attacks and stuff, you just hear it a little bit better. But again, it only makes sense if your room is treated at least decently, like corner absorbers, back wall absorbers, ceiling, cloud, a little, like something needs to be there. And like, just to give you like an estimate, like by how much my music changed upgrading to the next level, better speakers, better room acoustic, I'd say it's a quite big jump, um, maybe eight to 10% that I was able to be more precise and especially faster, not guessing that much about frequencies, mixing, EQing, and reverb, just being able to hear it more precisely. And 10% maybe doesn't sound that much, but if you consider someone producing for three, four years, and you eventually get to closer to the ceiling of learning everything, like doing diminishing returns, of course, doing like a, a jump of 10% better after three, four, five years of music production is quite significant. So unfortunately, as always, the more you pay, the more you get. That's just how things go. But don't think as a beginner that your music sucks because of the speaker. There are like hundreds and hundreds of other factors that you're just doing eventually wrong at the beginning of your career. So the middle tier of speakers I would recommend after around like three, three and a half to four years of music production. You should definitely have releases out and you should definitely make your first little income with music. Now let's get to the big bad boys. I absolutely love these speakers. Absolutely. Like I built the studio brand new. It's like all like all of the walls are like 40 centimeters of absorbing material and then an air gap of 40 centimeters. So in here, the room acoustic is as good as possible with the room dimensions I have. Also the ceiling, everything built into the wall. By the way, the wall right here, it still looks a little nasty because it's not finished. There's like one metal cover that should go around it so that only the speaker is visible and the cover like all in here, all of the dampening and stuff you won't see at the end. It's amazing to listen to these. Like everyone that comes here to the studio and listens to these speakers is just blown away by how precise they are. They go loud. Those are ATC speakers. I personally consider them the best studio speakers. Yes, there are way more expensive speakers available. These are already very expensive. That's tier three. That's usually five, six thousand and up. That's a lifelong investment. You should only buy these if you're a full-time music producer. You should only buy them if you have a room that is big enough and acoustically treated enough to make them shine. You should only buy them if you can cut the taxes due to them. And if it's something for like long term, like I'll never change these speakers. I'll work on these until I'm deaf or old or sick of music production, which will hopefully never happen. And also here, yes, they're expensive, but they don't lose in value. You can usually sell them for almost the same price. So it's not a huge risk. And the enjoyment of just sitting here listening to them, it, it, it's like, it's hard to describe. It's again, next level. It sounds way more precise. It goes louder. They're faster. The, the mid woofer, the mid, do you call it even woofer? In Germany, we have other words for these, but yeah, there is like precision to the max. And the jump is again, another, I'd say eight to maybe even 12%. And it's the combination of the speaker and the room. Those speakers in another room, that is not treated would still sound like shit and you just wasted all of your money. Also here, the same rule applies. Put at least like twice as much into room acoustics, which I actually did in this room right here. Even the floor is dampened, the ceiling is dampened. Like if you put a measurement mic right here, it's as good as it gets. And it definitely improved and changed the way I make music. I use way less EQs, way less compressors, way less 
time is spent trying to find the right setting, trying to find the right sounds. It's it's like I I can't describe it. It's it's huge. Like um, my my past two songs were released on Lost Frequencies label, and if you listen to them for ten seconds and compare it to new tracks that I started right here, where I selected every single sample in this room right here with these speakers, there is a difference. It's it's like I'd say half of it is the room and the speaker, and the other half is just me also like learning more and advancing more. But let's let's listen to these songs. I mean, they're completely different songs, but. Just the precision of like the fatness and the mixing and the the kick. I, I just I'm just able to choose the right kicks. Let's let's listen to it. So yes, unfortunately, speakers and the room, again, and the room, very important, and the room, will improve your music making significantly at a certain point in your career. As a beginner, definitely not. You could put an absolute beginner in here if he doesn't know how to handle the DAW, if he doesn't know anything about music theory, the speaker of the room won't help him. He doesn't even know what to listen for. So at the beginning, start with something like this. Again, seven, eight inch woofer, highly recommended, even if it's above your budget. Below, just, just forget about it. It's pointless. Don't listen to these companies selling you small, dinky speakers, and they have amazing low end. And the worst is if companies tell you to buy a subwoofer. A subwoofer introduces so many problems, and it's just them putting you into their ecosystem. So you buy small dinky speakers that you spend two, three hundred euros on, you're invested, then you realize they don't have any low end. I mean, how could they have any low end? And then the company upsells you to, to a subwoofer that costs, again, the same amount. You're, you're better off buying something bigger. The subwoofer, yes, it's nice. And it might sound good, but especially for beginners, it's so hard to place a subwoofer in a room and make it work the right way, especially if the room is not acoustically treated. I would highly, highly recommend against a subwoofer for beginners. The first three, four years, no subwoofer. Even here, this studio, no subwoofer. It's just not needed. And like this closed off system of a speaker without something additional is way easier to handle. So yeah, good luck speaker shopping. The last advice is buy speakers and put them in your room. It might happen that the Yamahas are the right ones for you, your style of music and your room, but maybe the KRK ones are better. They're kind of on the, on the same tier. I would just order both, test them in the room and send one of them back. That's the only way to know. No video, no other person, no one in the store will ever be able to recommend you something that works for your music and your room. So just test it in your room and you'll be a lot happier and you'll hear the difference. Like, trust me, if you're in your own studio and you have two pairs of speakers right next to each other and you switch A and B between them, there is a significant difference that will make your decision buying one of the two or three options you have available within your budget so much easier. Like instantly you'll know that's the pair of speaker I want. So good luck shopping, buying. I'll put these in the description for me. They were perfect at the very beginning. And yeah, tune in tomorrow, another video right here in the studio, making some music. <laughs>